Hey guys, uh, we are live. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, just um, give me a second here to organize this right real quick. All right, so we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, first off, there's been another hey guys, school shooting uh, at live. Dalton High School. Uh, we have a lot to talk luckily, about there has not been um, give me a Dalton High School. And that's in Georgia, by the way. And that is not another shooting at Dalton High School. It's another school shooting this time at Dalton High School. Yeah, and as you see, I'm smiling. Luckily, nobody was injured. Uh, the other big news from the day is Robert Moeller has been requesting witnesses, talking to witnesses. He's been requesting information from witnesses, and that information is quite interesting. We'll get to that in a little bit. I uh, yeah. Uh, also, um, Jared Kushner's uh, security clearance and some. Issues regarding that security clearance have popped up. Yeah, which is also very interesting, and it, it, it seems as though Robert Mueller's kind of closing in on the on Trump's inner circle now, and perhaps crossing that red line that Trump drew in the sand. Yeah, things are going to get pretty interesting, I think, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, there were also some very interesting tweets, um, not only by President Trump but by Hillary Clinton. Yeah, that, I, I saw that today, and she's actually attacking Trump it, on Twitter now. It looks like she might actually it's start time, speaking right? out. Yeah, uh, and, and I, I'm glad you see that, and, and I think the fact that she's doing this is going to kind of maybe push him in one direction. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, what else is there? Uh, well, Sessions. Trump basically attacked Jeff Sessions, his attorney general, today on Twitter. Uh, he, he attacked him for using the inspector general to investigate potential FISA warrant breaks breaches by, the, or breaches by the FBI and and he, he he didn't want sessions using the inspector general because it's a it's a an Obama appointee instead he wanted him to use DOJ attorneys and we'll get to that in a minute because what he said really didn't make much sense and it's kind of just he's another way for him to scapegoat Things. Yeah. Uh, well, the biggest story on Twitter this morning when we all woke up was, uh, of course, Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, they have decided that they will no longer be selling assault-style rifles. Uh, they have also decided to limit the, or put a put a limit to the age, so anybody yeah. under 21 will no longer be able to purchase guns. They, they, they've basically taken, taken the advice of the, of the students of uh, Stoneman Douglas and the people who have been behind them asking for the age increase for assault style rifles and or for, for well assault style rifles are banned and he's increasing age for all guns they're increasing yeah. age for all rifles and all guns yeah. uh, so so what should we start off with? let's start with uh, Dalton mm -hmm. Dalton High in Georgia about I guess it was about an hour and a half ago there were reports that shots were fired within the school and ironically, I mean, I don't want to joke about this or anything, but it was apparently it was a teacher who was firing shots within a classroom. Initially, the reports came out that this teacher tried taking his own life. Whether that's true or not, we don't really know yet. The official word hasn't come out. But a teacher had a gun in a classroom and was firing shots. So, so, so that, what, do you, what, is, what does this say about Trump's idea of arming teachers? I, I mean, first of all, this probably wasn't a, an AR-15 or whatever. It was probably a handgun. Uh, but it says that, it shows that all teachers are mentally stable. And there's going to be incidents like this, if, especially if teachers start carrying weapons in the classroom knowingly. Yeah. Luckily, no students were harmed. No one was shot. So, we can... Perhaps this can be a, a good educational lesson for those who have been pushing to arm teachers. I, I don't like the idea. I know some people do. But I, I think this is this shows why that's not a good idea. Oh, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, uh, maybe back, let's get back to the Dix thing. Um, is there any feedback? Do you guys have any feedback? Do you agree that this was a good move by Dix? Uh, some people say that it was probably a, a marketing ploy to gauge the market and, and kind of lead it. But but I, I think that it took a lot of guts, whether they're doing this thinking that they're going to gain customers or not. Who cares? I mean, 
I mean, any business they they want to gain customers, but this was this was ballsy. This was this took a yeah, lot definitely. of uh, and I I think they did it because they felt it was the right thing. I, I want to clarify a few things because there's a lot of confusion about did Dick didn't Dick's already ban these guns? Uh, are we sure after they're the, banning the guns after the Newport Virginia shooting? Yeah. So what happened then? This was a few years ago. I think in 2013 or around then they actually banned the sale of these weapons in. Dick's Sporting Goods stores, but they didn't ban them in the field and stream division of their stores, which is kind of like a sub-segment of Dick's Sporting Goods. These were still being sold in those stores. And today's announcement by the CEO is that they're actually banning them in all stores. And also, like Brian said earlier, raising the age limit from 18 to 21 in order to buy any guns. Yeah, yeah. It was a great move, in my opinion. Uh, the reasoning behind it, it doesn't really matter to me. I just think it was a great move, and it, it's going to be interesting to see if other companies follow or not. I mean, I, mean, I think the ultimate, ultimate, ultimately, we'd like to see Bass Pro Shops also ban the sale of these yeah. weapons, but I, I just don't see that happening. Uh, uh, let's move on to uh, the Robert Mueller and I news that we have today. Yeah, this actually just broke, I'd say, about half an hour ago. Robert Mueller has... This broke, NBC broke this story that Robert Mueller has been interviewing witnesses and asking questions about what Trump knew and when he knew it in relation to Hillary Clinton's emails, which were hacked by Russia and then disseminated through WikiLeaks. He's, he wants to know if Trump actually knew about the existence of these hacked emails prior to the public knowing. And he also wants to know if Trump played any role at all in the dissemination of these emails, in in actually disseminating them to the public, and if he he played any role in planning how to do that or when to do it, and pl- how he if he planned the timing, and you might recall back uh, during his campaign, he actually got up on the podium, I forget where it was, and he said, "Russia, if you have Hillary Clinton's emails, release them," and this is what I think spurring on the investigation into that, and. I think it's going to be interesting to see what he finds because you know Trump's interviewing a lot of people. You mean Mueller? Mueller. Yeah, Mueller's interviewing a lot of people who are actually on the campaign, so they they probably know what Trump knew, and they know they can't lie anymore. Exactly, or they're going to get charged with lying to uh, federal agents. But you got to figure if Trump did know about these emails, and more specifically, if he actually planned the release of these emails, and worked with WikiLeaks or Russia in order to to disseminate them, that would enter him into the, a criminal into conspiracy. The conspiracy. Yes. Uh, and Mueller is also looking in... This is according to those who Mueller has interviewed. Uh, he's also looking into... into um, my mind just went blank. He's also looking into... Who, into the Miss America pageant. I'm sorry. He's looking at a 2013 Miss America pageant meeting that Trump had in Moscow, and who who those people were that he met with, uh, whether he met with Russian officials, and what those conversations may have been. So that that's big in itself, because he's going all the way back to 2013, before Trump claims he even had aspirations to run for president, even though we know that's probably not the case. Yeah. Uh, so well, I, I mean, you got to look, he registered the trademark Make America Great Again in 2012. Yeah. So... What was he using that for unless he was planning on running for president? Well, it was registered by Donald Trump for president or something. Like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just crazy. But uh, all this, it, as Mueller's closing in on Trump, you can kind of see Trump's panicking more with some, some tweets that are outrageous. He, and that kind of leads us into uh, Jared Kushner's security clearances, clearance being removed or downgraded yesterday. Uh, he no longer has access to the super highly classified information, mm-hmm. uh, sensitive, it's the stuff that's uh, sens- considered sensitive. And according to sources, Kushner's upset about this, and he's anger, angry at uh, Chief of Staff John Kelly, which... Well, not only Kushner, but also Ivanka Trump is, is allegedly angered, uh, and uh, some within the media are saying it's, it's a war, it's an all-out war between Kushner and Ivanka, versus Kelly, and all three of them aren't going to last. Somebody's headed out, and I'm guessing it's going to probably be John Kelly, yeah. because Trump's Trump's more loyal to his family. 
Well, yeah, exactly. And, you, you, you know, the idea, the whole thing, the whole reason why Kushner's security clearance were was downgraded is because of why. That's because that Mueller's looking into it. Am I correct in saying that? Well, and he lied on his on his forms, his, on his clearance forms, several times. Yeah, but they actually came out and said that he's under that, oh, that yeah. he's, they're investigating Kushner and his and his uh, use of these use of his uh, security clearance. It, it, so it's, it's, so I, to to me, that signifies that Mueller is actually heavily looking into yeah, Kushner and, and, and found something and told the White House that he doesn't believe that they don't believe Kushner should hold these clearances. Well, and, and it, it's just, it's just like incredible thinking that Trump's, Trump was attacking Hillary on the campaign trail for, for basically the same thing, but at a much less, less of a scale. He was saying that she was irresponsible with their, with their emails. Yeah. But this, you have an entire individual who is, who is, has the highest security clearance getting all this information. And now they're saying that there's four countries which are using this uh, leverage against Kushner in order to manipulate. Manipula yeah, yeah. So what Brian's referring to is several countries who are our allies came forward and they they apparently recorded conversations between Kushner and other countries in which it appeared as though these other countries were trying to entice Kushner to change to work with the White House to do stuff in their favor in turn for financial gain for Kushner personally. Whether or not Kushner took tried taking taking these uh, other leaders up on these offers, we don't know. But we we do know that it appears that these other nations have been trying to take advantage of Kushner's Kushner's uh, dire need for money financing for his uh, property in New York City, the six 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 property, and also his inexperience in government. Yeah, it's it's really scary and uh, really irresponsible, especially. Since this man has attacked Clinton so incessantly on the campaign trail for emails, yeah, exactly. I mean, come on, it's it's crazy. Yeah, so so I, I mean, I think we're I think we're gonna see see a lot happen today. It was just noted that Trump's actually canceled the White House actually canceled all of the White House press briefings today, and Trump called several executives into the Oval Office for an urgent meeting. So I don't know if that's related. I don't know if it had something to do with. Something else I've heard it could be related to gun control, but some there's a lot of panic in the White House right now, and I think it doesn't take a dummy to realize that. Yeah. Uh, another piece of a tidbit of news today is one of Trump's tweets. Uh, he basically attacked Jeff Sessions once again. Um, this is this is the second time he's attacked Sessions in the last couple of days, uh, which kind of makes me feel as though he might be trying to push him out. Uh, or or prepare America for him firing such Jeff Sessions. Now, there. If Why don't you read the tweet first? Yeah, let, let's let's start with a tweet and what, right and what he said. Uh, Why is Attorney General Jeff Sessions asking the Inspector General to investigate potentially massive FISA abuse? Will take forever. Has no prosecute prosecutor prosecutorial power. And already late with reports on Comey, etc. Isn't that Inspector General an Obama guy? Why not use Justice Justice Department lawyers? Disgraceful. Well, I'd like to touch on a few things here because the Inspector General was appointed to Inspector General by President Obama, but he he also worked under other Republican presidents in other capacities and. I, I mean, I don't know, but I'm, my guess is he's probably actually a Republican. Well, I, uh, an inspector general's job is to be as least partisan as possible. Exactly. But, but okay, so but moving on from that, the inspector general is appointed by the president. So technically, President Trump c could remove the current inspector general. I don't know his name. Horowitz. He, Horowitz. He could remove Horowitz and appoint his own inspector general. So if if he really had concerns of FISA abuse. He could go and appoint somebody who he knows would investigate it fully in his benefit. He could actually go ahead and do that. Yeah. But he doesn't do that. And the reason he doesn't do that is because he knows that there's nothing to be found and there was nothing illegal about the FISA warrant. He, he wants to just continue the narrative without being responsible for the narrative. And, and he, he always wants somebody to scapegoat. And right now it's an inspector general. If he went ahead and, and put his own inspector general in, in the DOJ, then he wouldn't have anybody to scapegoat except himself. 
Yeah, and, and I want to just talk about something about his his recent attacks on Jeff Sessions. Uh, well, we all thought that he was going to maybe fire Rosenstein, who's currently the, the acting attorney general. Uh, he, for, as, not acting, he's a deputy assistant attorney general, correct? But he is responsible for the Mueller investigation since Jeff Sessions has recused himself. So we thought they were going to get rid of Rosenstein. That's clearly not happening. But if Trump was able to get rid of Sessions, he would then be able to appoint another attorney general who would... Super, who would go above? Yeah, he'd Rosenstein. supersede Rosenstein and actually take over Rosenstein's job. And, as far and, as and typically, this is impossible because Congress would have to vote on it, and and he wouldn't be able to appoint anybody that was too too nuts. But on March twenty fourth, Congress goes in recess for sixteen days. Technically, he could appoint a re- make a recess appointment of a new attorney general. Now, this person would have to be a member of his cabinet already, so it could be anybody in his cabinet. He could appoint them as attorney general, someone who would agree to fire Robert Mueller. Now, the Senate would not have to vote. It will be a recess appointment. Now, there's also a way to to block this, and that would be during recess have, have one senator stay behind and actually be available, which I'm hoping the Democrats will do if they sense this is going to happen. My guess is they will. But at, at the same time, if Trump does go ahead and put in a new attorney general, my guess is that there would be challenges within the Supreme Court because he would th- that act right there would be obstruction of justice, in my mind. One would think, yes. I, I would think that firing Jeff Sessions in order to supersede Rod Rosenstein by putting somebody, putting a Trump guy in charge of the Trump-Russia investigation would be obstruction of justice and I I don't see how a Supreme Court wouldn't rule against that. Yeah, I no, just can't. I, I agree, I agree. Uh, also Hillary Clinton had a tweet of her own today, uh, which I, I found you have I found very interesting. Uh, the tweet read I say this as a former Secretary of State and as an American. The Russians are still coming. Our intelligence professionals are imploring Trump to act. Will he continue to ignore and surrender or protect our country? And then she linked to a Washington Post article where, uh, where Mike Rogers basically said that Trump never gave him, gave him orders to go after the Yeah, so, so I believe it was yesterday uh, the NSA chairman, director, excuse me, Mike Rogers was asked by, I believe it was the Senate Intel Committee, uh, about about the Russia investigate about I'm sorry about Russian interference in our elections, and he was asked if Trump actually has asked him to do anything about Russian meddling in the upcoming midterms, and his answer was no, and his answer being no means that they can't do anything. He needs an instruction from President Trump in order to do stuff, do something about it. So the idea that Trump's not not moving forward with this shows that he has something to hide, at least in my opinion. Yeah, uh, and I, I think it's great that Hillary Clinton's finally speaking out. I don't care what you think of her, whether you think she, that she's not fit to be president or whatever, but the fact that she's pretty much backing the entire intel community and yeah. pretty much all of America except the diehard Trump supporters is kind of backing Trump into a corner, but... It might not be a good corner because now he doesn't want to act because it's going to be obvious Clinton said it. So yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of scary, scary in itself. I think Hillary should just say, Trump won't do this. I bet Trump won't do this and then have Trump prove her wrong. <laughs> not a bad idea. It's like any it's like any toddler. That's the way you get them. Yeah. Also, also today, uh, Paul Manafort was in a... D.C. courtroom, and he was arraigned on the additional charges that uh, Robert Mueller filed, filed against him, I believe it was last week. He, he had to show up without an attorney. He just walked in, uh, and he was in there for a while and walked out. Uh, it's not really big news, but it's interesting. And something else is, so, so I mean, and it, oh, the trial is set for September, I believe it's September 17th yeah. of, of 2018. So that should be interesting. And I assume it could be delayed. I'm not sure. Yeah, but that, that could give us somewhat of a timeline of when Mueller thinks he might have all of his ducks in a row. 
I, I, I think it's going to be hard for Mueller to convince the courts to extend that deadline. So, like Brian said, I think that's sort of a sort of a hard deadline, giving him a kind of a kind of giving him a deadline. Yeah, and uh, so so we might actually get something before the end of the year, whether or it's may. whether or not whether or not that will be acted on by Congress is another. Well, story. I I wonder if um, Manafort still could flip. It's not too late for Manafort to flip. So it should be interesting to see what happens on that. The, the longer he extends this, the less he's going to get in exchange for flipping, though. So you would one would think that he would have would have flipped would by have now. pled by now and agreed. To I, I just think Manafort's still hoping that he's going to get pardoned by President Trump, which he may. I, I think that's the number one reason that he's not he's not doing anything. Yeah, he he thinks that. He's going to go to trial in September. Who cares if he's found guilty? The president's going to pardon him. Well, and at the same time, my guess is that even if he was to plead guilty to something, his chart his charge would have been a lot a lot harsher than Rick Gates' charges and George Papadopoulos' charges. He would have had to plead to something a lot higher on the you yeah. know, and he would have probably been looking at ten years in prison. Yeah, I mean, we don't know for sure, but well, that's a, a, a good guess. The the Rick Gates plead plead agreement is um, that's that's a that's. His sentence is looking to be about five or six years, but Mueller, if Gates, uh, Gates is cooperative with him, can actually reduce that sentence. Yeah, and and it was kind of interesting. We saw that Mueller actually dropped 22 charges against Rick Gates. Uh, I think that was yesterday. And the the right the right wing on Twitter went crazy. Oh, Mueller just dropped almost all the charges yeah. on Rick Gates. Of course he dropped all the charges. He's cooperating. What that tells us, if anything, is that Rick Gates has so much information on the Trump campaign and on Trump that it was worth dropping all these massive charges against him. Not, yeah. not, the, not vice versa. Well, I, I mean, you don't know for you can't say hundred percent sure, but no, but the odds that, are that seems that's why, because we know he's cooperating with Mueller. Um, that I, I know. Yesterday, you actually had a story. You made a tweet thread about uh, the Russian prostitute. Would you like to discuss that at all, or? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know her name offhand, right? Yeah, second. well, well, there's a but, but basically, there's a Russian process. Some of you guys might have read my thread about three weeks ago. Um, Ale Alexei Navalny, who is the opposition leader of Putin in Russia, who has been forbidden to run against him, uh, he basically posted this video in Russian, showing that this this sex worker, she was like a prostitute or an escort. Uh, went on the yacht of uh, Oleg Deripaska, who was an, a, a very wealthy Russian with connections with uh, Pridhako, who is the uh, foreign minister, I believe, of Russia. Uh, you might want to double check me on its title, but I and believe Brian's pronun it. pronunciation of these words is usually not too good. So, so, so anyway, uh, the, the sex worker went on the yacht with Deripaska and Pridhako, and uh, for I think it was a week or two, and she pretty much got the scoop and pretty much tied these two men to Paul Manafort and the Trump campaign. And she wrote a book about it, but used pseudonyms and different names. And Navalny pointed this all out. Now, so, yesterday, so, so she probably has some information that about what went in between those two guys, right? Yeah, de well, definitely between Manafort and and Deripaska. We don't know if how Trump. Figured into okay. it in her in her what she knows, so it could be useful for Mueller then. Correct. So anyway, yesterday it was uh, reported by actually her herself on her Instagram page uh, when she was being wheeled away in an open van to jail in Thailand after she was allegedly giving courses on uh, on sex work in to Russian tourists. So. She was being taken away to jail, and she did a live feed video in which she basically stated that she, that she needs help. She needs America to help her. Uh, Ru Russians are after her. They set up this whole arrest, and now they're going to bring her back to deport her to Russia, where she will either spend the rest of her life in jail or she will be killed. She reached out to the United States or Europe or any other nation who could help her. And said that in return, she can give testimony, which would be the missing piece of the whole Trump, Manafort, Deripaska timeline. So she's basically saying she has the missing piece. 
and that if they save her from death, she can or at help least them. imprisonment. Well, you you gotta. I mean, we don't know if she's telling the truth. We don't know we don't how know. much information she has. But at the same time, it, uh, I think it would be worth Mueller's uh, resources to try and get. Well, her. here's the thing. I, I think the president would have to yeah, sign off. Sec- Secretary of State uh, Rex Tillerson. So so it's unlikely that that she's gonna be brought to the United States to testify. But, but she could work. But Mueller could contact a European nation and ask for their help in providing her safety and then get testimony from her. Yeah, um, as as to whether she is telling the truth or not, I seem to believe she is only because only because if she was to slander these high up Russians like that, knowing she's going back to Russia, she'd have to be insane. Like why do that unless yeah. you know your life's in danger? So I mean I could have been to sell a book. You, I mean, we, don't, we no. can't say anything with certainty here. No, but, but it was cert- It was certainly interesting. You can go back on my Twitter, uh, and my Twitter's my Twitter's right under me, right there, uh, and look for the thread I made yesterday afternoon. It, it explains it in further detail. Washington, the Washington Post also did this article, pretty much saying the same thing that my thread says. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, Brian took a lot of heat for a tweet that he made. What was it yesterday or the day before? Uh, in regards to the school shooting, and he actually had a uh, lady from Fo- what was her name on Fox News. A- any anyhow, he took a lot of heat for a tweet, and I I think he deserves uh, an opportunity to explain himself. Would you like to do that? Yeah, I'm actually writing a, a article about this, but uh, Katie Pavlich, which, who you probably recognize from Fox News, kind of attacked me for this tweet. Uh, the the tweet was the tweet was made shortly after the uh, the whole the whole gun. Gun it, the whole Parkland shooting thing, and it, it basically said it said if, if a gunman walks into a military base like Fort Hood with a hundred percent of the populace highly trained in firearm use and still murders thirteen people with a pistol, do you honestly think that twenty percent of teachers having a gun is going to stop the next killer who may have an AR fifteen? Now this tweet went viral. Uh, it was seen five million times on Twitter, and then it went viral on Facebook. I didn't post it on Facebook; some group did, and it went incredibly viral on Facebook. Yeah. Now, what this tweet doesn't show is my subsequent tweet, in which I pointed out that these soldiers were not armed. But the whole purpose of this tweet was not—it it was not to point out that that armed soldiers would have brought this guy down. The whole point of the tweet was to was to show. The, the military doesn't trust its own servicemen and women carrying guns on, on a military base. So why should we trust teachers who aren't trained with these weapons to carry exactly. guns in a school of un, un, untrained individuals? I, that I was the purpose it. of the tweet. I got it when you posted it. That was the purpose of the tweet. And basically, Kate, Katie Pavlich attacked me, and then I had all these other people attacking me. Um, all I say is just go back and read the subsequent tweets that I made after that. And also read my explanation of the tweet. I will actually be writing an article on IR.net probably probably tomorrow at some point. And uh, I'll kind of explain this. I also I also want to just discuss how social media is kind of uh, kind of moving the narrative both in a good and a bad way here and, and how a viral tweet like that can be taken out of context and just totally oh, look what happened to me. totally go crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah so so we have that uh, if, and for anybody who has questions and they prefer to ask them on Twitter, you can tweet at us with the hashtag Krasenstein Live right up there, uh, and we'll try, uh, we'll try to get answers. I, to I just questions. replied some this this Ponzi Stein guy who claims that we ran Ponzi schemes, which is baseless. Uh, he says that we were exposed by I was exposed for my ignorance. Uh, if you actually read the tweet, you would see that I wrote another tweet. Next to it, set, showing saying that these men were not armed. In the thread, so, in the same tweet thread, if you guys know crazy. how to use threads on Twitter, uh, th- I'm going to take a few questions on Twitter. Um, let's see here. Did we hear about the shooting in Georgia school? Yeah, we actually covered that uh, earlier. Yeah, that was Dalton early. High School, and apparently a teacher had a gun in a classroom, and shots were fired, and that teacher is now in custody, and the students were not harmed. Yeah, I mean, but, maybe next we should just. Start arming students. Yes, arming. Uh, maybe, maybe just students that have an A, 
A average of 4.0 because maybe there'll be more sane carrying. But Brian is being sarcastic here. I am being sarcastic. Uh, Okay, so Dougie Fresh, good to see you again, Dougie, uh, says, is Kushner losing his clearance a major lug nut coming loose in the journey of the Trump administration's wheels coming off? Is it a watershed moment? And, you know, I, I really think it is. I think it's kind of unraveling the whole White House right now. Uh, it's kind of pitting pitting teammates against each other, if you want to use that analogy. Uh, I think I think Chief of Staff John Kelly is being pitted against Ivanka and uh, Kushner. And I think Trump's kind of stuck in between having to take sides. You know, he's loyal to uh, both Kushner and Kelly. So it should be interesting to see what, what happens there. But you have to realize that Trump actually told John Kelly that it's his decision. So Trump backed John Kelly's decision. So I, I can't imagine that Kushner and Ivanka are that happy with Donald Trump right now. Yeah, I, I think this could be the start of an unraveling of the whole Trump administration, per se. I think that as, as, Mueller, starts, as Mueller starts questioning more of these individuals, they're going to have to start turning on him. And, and this Kushner thing is, I think, going to is a spark that's probably going to ignite the rest of the administration. And I think that over the next few weeks or months, we're going to see more of an unraveling. I think we're going to see more leaks now that John, Chief of Staff John Kelly is kind of losing some of his standing. If you might recall, he's the one that actually kind of contained all the leaks in the first place yeah. and kind of brought the White House together as a team. And I, I think with him losing respect and him being the target of some of the of Trump's inner circle, I think I think you're going to start seeing more leaks come out. And I think you're going to see the White House become an even larger mess than it already has. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, somebody asked if we have Instagram. Uh, we don't have Instagram. We considered getting it, but like, what, what's the point of Instagram for for this? You yeah, know, I'm not. Really we don't sure. take pictures and post them, so I, I just don't see Instagram being that beneficial for our whole calls right now. Uh, somebody said you guys are younger than than I thought. Uh, we're 36, so did you think we were older than 36? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if there's any other questions here on Twitter. I kind of think it's funny how there's so many trolls in here now. Are you guys Russian bots? Uh, all your guy, all you guys are doing is claiming that we're Ponzi schemers, which which we did a complete thread about what actually happened and how we sold an ad to a scammer and it turned into a complete crazy mess for us and how we have no criminal records and we're never indicted on anything and never charged with a crime in our life. But I guess you guys don't read the facts. All right. Any other questions? Uh, you can either write to us on Twitter with the hashtag Krasenstein Live up there, or you can just leave some comments over here in the, in the chat box. But we might not get to those as efficiently as we do to the ones on Twitter since they kind of stream so fast. Uh, just recapping uh, some of the top stories today. Uh, Dalton High School in Georgia had a shooting incident today. Um, it was it was a teacher who was armed with a with a with a firearm, and uh, apparently he started shooting off rounds in his classroom. He was barric he barricaded himself in and then was arrested. But, you know, it goes to show that guns in classrooms might not be the that best thing, yeah. uh, especially when teachers are carrying them. Uh, also today, it was break, It just broke about an hour ago, is that Robert Mueller is actually looking into what Ch President Trump knew about the hacked Hillary Clinton emails, and he's asking witnesses ab about when he actually knew about these emails. Did he know about them prior to the public knowing about them? And did he play any role at all in the dissemination and release of these emails? That's going to be an important part because that would, uh, one would think that would enter him into a criminal conspiracy. Uh, Jared Kushner, last night, it was, it was uh, announced that he's had his uh, security clearances downgraded. Uh, he can no longer look at sensitive information. And, and actually today, we didn't mention this yet, Kushner actually asked, why is John Kelly doing this to me? Which is it's it's kind of like I I kind of like he's a kid. That's... I kind of yeah I kind of picture Kushner whining about this, uh, maybe with a few tears drop, dripping down his face, uh, kind of pointing fingers at John Kelly and unraveling the White House a little bit more. 
I, I, I think that this whole Mueller story where he's asking about the hacked emails and what, what Trump knew and when did he know it, I, I think this is probably one of the bigger stories we've had over the last few weeks, only for the fact that this shows that Mueller is actively looking at Trump's involvement in a possible criminal conspiracy. And, and if, if he finds out that Trump did know that these emails were, were available and that Trump directed anything involving these emails, Trump's going to be screwed. Yeah. Well, and, and also yes, yesterday, with all the Kushner news coming out, we also learned that Mueller's looking into some finances in uh, relation to the 2013 Miss Universe competition and other, and other finances that President Trump was, or Donald Trump was involved in prior to his presidency and during his campaign. So that, that, that's actually the red line that Trump drew. You might recall, um, I guess it was probably about six months ago, Trump actually said if, if Mueller crosses the line and starts looking into his personal finances, that's going to be the red line and implicating, or the red line and he inferred that he pro would probably result in Mueller being fired. Yeah, so, you know, I, I expect something big to happen in the next week or two. I think we're going to see something. And if not in the next week or two, I think it would be during the uh, Congress recess. recess yeah. in, on March 24th. March 24th is a big date. I'm hoping that the Democrats are aware of what could happen and they will leave somebody behind so that Trump cannot make a recess appointment if he decides to fire Sessions or push Sessions out. Uh, I'm thinking they're smart enough to not let this happen, but let's hope. Yeah, I, I mean, there's enough Democrats in the Senate I, that really care about this country. I think they're going to, at least one of them would stay back. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And then what happens if he tries to fire Sessions with one person back? Would that one person have a say, or would he just not be able to do I, it? I just think he, he, he can't appoint him, because I, I think that's how it works, is he wouldn't be able to make a recess appointment, because uh, it wouldn't be a recess. recess. Okay. That, that makes sense. So, uh, and another interesting point to note is that Trump was went really hard on saying that he was going to raise the age limit on selling assault rifles. And, and after, his, after his meeting with the NRA, he's actually kind of quiet on it. Yeah, uh, somebody just said that Trump's going to write a write an executive order to ban bump stocks, and and that's great. I I totally I totally think that's a great move. But that can't be the only move. Of course he's going to do that because that doesn't affect the NRA. The, the gun manufacturers aren't breaking in millions and billions of dollars from selling bump stocks. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a way to make it look like he's actually doing something about when firearms. He, yeah, when he's doing very little. Uh, and, and he's going to use that to avoid doing anything major such as uh, age, age limit restriction or possibly banning additional weapons. Well, and, I mean, you look at Stoneman Douglas, and a bump stock wasn't used there, just an AR-15. And yeah. with an AR-15, you still shoot nearly, up, I believe, up to 100 rounds per minute. Uh, do you really need to fire more rounds than that? Yeah, I, I think the only the only mass shooting where a bump stock was actually used was the Las Vegas shooting. And, and that, that was, I mean, there were 500 people shot there. Yeah. It was nuts. I, I mean, we, we can't allow for that. Uh, that's not to say people aren't going to make their own or, you know... There's 3D printers, so so that's not the that's not really the area to completely focus on. Yeah, it's going to help, but it's not going to help nearly enough. I, it, it's I mean the whole gun gun control issue. I think is more than just doing one thing. I think several things need to be done. Whether it is focusing more on mental illness, while also perhaps having security armed security guards at schools, while also banning assault style rifles. I think I, I mean in my opinion that's that's a, that would be a major step banning the assault style rifles. Sure. Yeah. People can still get the guns on the black market, people can still buy them from people other people who own them. But it's it would it would be one more deterrent. You know, like there's laws for everything, but there's also ways around those laws. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, somebody a lot of you guys are talking about the kids of Parkland, uh, David Hogg, Emma Gonzalez, all all of those those kids who are really pushing for gun legislation mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that they're being attacked by those on the right and I think that's just it's just pathetic I, I mean I don't really know what else you say other than that it, I mean I, I it, these are some of the these are the future voters and they have every right to have a say some of those on Fox News have attacked them saying that that they they're out of their league or 
that they don't have a right to right to state their opinion, but they have every right. They have just as much right as you or I do, and and they're smarter than most of us are. It's it appears uh, most of these kids were actually involved in uh, in the on the debate team, and they actually debated gun control. Did they? several a couple times i believe so they're definitely prepared for this and they're doing a spectacular job and this isn't going to fade out like some of these other massacres yeah. and have. yes they will be most of them will be voting in 2020 and some of them will be voting in the midterms this year so that's that's a big plus uh, a few other questions on twitter with the hashtag Frasenstein live uh jim zutunian i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing your name uh says have you ever thought about having a debate with a conservative-minded person like myself in a setting like this? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would actually love to do that. Um, we, we can actually do it over Skype, uh, Jim, if you'd like to take part in a future uh, future show that we have. Yeah, um, we, we we're trying to we're going to try reaching out to some uh, maybe maybe congressmen who are running or uh, con congressional candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, to get on the show, uh, we kind of set up the whole Skype thing where we can put somebody in the in the. Uh, yeah, yesterday me and Brian had had a short show where we were guys actually on Skype and we still did the same thing. And instead of that line right that line right there being behind me, it was actually between us, and it was a form of a, another another Skype box. And, and I know this is a very informal informal setting. Uh, it's just my office and. There's a picture behind us with a glare. Uh, there's shadows. Um, we're just we're not doing this for any yeah. production well, I, company. I, I, we did get we did buy some mics, so some lapel mics. Where I hope it would help the sound sound travel better. Uh, I know there's some echo in here because we have hard floors and uh, it's an oddly shaped room. So I, hopefully that would help. But you, you know we're we're just trying to we're doing this for you guys. We're not making money off this. We're not you know it's just our time. Get, that we're giving to you guys. Uh, another question. Uh, Dougie Fresh says, says, sorry to keep spamming you guys, but did you see the story about Stoneman Douglas' father who altered an email with a CNN producer prior to the CNN town hall to suggest that CNN was trying to script the dialogue? Should there be legal retribution for the father? You know, I, I had planned to talk about this today, but me and Brian just decided that we didn't really want to because we didn't, want to, we didn't want to target any of the victims. Of I, the I actually reached out to Emma Gonzalez for her opinion on this, and she gave a very, uh, I, I don't know how to say, she, she gave a, a, a statement to me, a, an opinion to me that didn't attack him and didn't attack the media either. Yeah, I, I think what she's trying to say is that it was a little confusing the way CNN went about doing it, and she doesn't think Colton actually... Was uh, had it meant to target anyone with this, but but it it, it could have been it could have been clearer. But at the same time, CNN she said CNN wasn't trying to get one over on him. And, was, and and I, and I I get the feeling that Emma Gonzalez doesn't want to start attacking her classmates. That's the last thing we should be doing is attacking each other. And she she knows that if he sh if she starts attacking her classmates on this, it's the conversation is going to center around that rather than the whole gun debate. So I'm kind of trying to not do this do this either. Uh, I don't want to attack this. I, 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 just, I just mentioned it quickly. And it, and the father, Glenn, uh, Glenn Hobb actually came out. He, he sort of apologized for the whole thing. It, it, what, what happened was he, the email that he released was altered. It wasn't actually the email that CNN had sent him. And what happened was it was altered. He, Glenn claims that he didn't actually alter it for any devious reasons. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know why he altered it, why it was altered. But, so CNN pu post published that, published their original email showing that this email that Glenn released was incorrect. And Glenn ad actually came out and admitted that he altered it. And it was just altered. A few words were taken out. And those few words actually kind of changed the context of what the email said. And, it, it kind of made it look as though CNN didn't want to give Cole Hogg an opportunity to speak on the topics he wanted to, and that's not the case. CNN just wanted it to, they, basically Cole Hogg wanted to give an entire speech where, where CNN only wanted to be a brief point, just like all the other students had. And it, it wasn't them trying to tell him he couldn't ask his question or give, provide his comment. They actually allowed, told him he could. But, 
Cole wanted to give a whole speech, and they just didn't have the time for that in the setting they were in. So, so it, yeah. it didn't happen. And, and you know, Cole. I don't think Cole's trying to make a big deal about it either. I think Fox News was who was trying to make a big deal about yeah. it, and they're backing off now, so that's good. Um, basically, what Eddie said is kind of what Emma told me. She's pretty much said the same thing, that uh, it was more of a misunderstanding between the two parties rather than any bad intentions. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm, I'm going to believe that. And, and I, I think all these students, I think all these students at uh, Stone and Douglas are really close with each other. I don't think anybody's pointing fingers at anyone else. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, I I guess I I don't know if there's any updates. I'm gonna check for some updates on uh, Dalton High because I'm interested to see what they what they actually found out about that. Um, I know there's there were some rumors that the teacher was trying to kill himself, but I don't know how accurate those were. That was from somebody who was on the scene reporting that, uh, just a bystander. So, you, you know, I don't know. I, I, we do know that was a teacher, and it was a teacher who had a had a gun and who fired a gun, and it's, everybody's safe, thankfully. Thank God for that. Uh, yeah, that's the most important thing. Uh, in the long run, I hope that this maybe sheds more light on the debate of whether teachers should be armed or not, and maybe helps prove that it's not such a smart idea. In, in my opinion, I think it's a stupid idea, but everybody's going to have their own opinion, and everybody's allowed to have their own opinion. And, and you, you know it's really it's really kind of ridiculous. I see all these uh, people on Twitter saying that it was a setup and it was a Democratic teacher who had a gun who just wanted to prove a point, which I think is just re the most ridiculous thing to do. You know, first you claim that the students of Stoneman Douglas are crisis actors, and now this. You know, just let you you can't you you keep saying stop politicizing things. You're you're doing taking the Russian the Russian means of uh, attacking people by. You well, know, it, creating propaganda. It's, it's just that everything's a conspiracy theory, and nobody believes facts anymore. And and th this can be this can be said in uh, earlier today. I brought up the fact that my gun tweet went viral, and I was attacked. And one of the attacks I got was saying that it, basically my gun t the tweet I in question basically said that a gunman walked into Fort Hood filled with soldiers and killed thirteen people. Why do you think a teacher is going to be able to stop? Stop yeah. the gunman, and people attacked me and said, "Well, the the gun the soldiers were not allowed to have weapons thanks to Bill Clinton." Now, now this was actually false. Uh, it's on Snopes. So you can go see it, and it says that George W. George H. W. Bush actually, not George H. W. Bush, but his administration, the army, the military under him. Implementing this, implemented this rule to not allow guns on military bases, and and then and then during the Clinton administrations when the, the military finally signed it through, and it was not an executive decision, so Clinton was not responsible. Now, people immediately said, "Oh well, Snopes is false. Snopes is known to have fake information." Well, do your own research. You can actually research it and see when was this rule put in place. When, when did, what president did it, you can find this, you can go to the library yeah. if you want to. If you don't trust the internet, go to the library and you can look it up. Go to the Library of Congress, look it up, so and you can see the facts. I, I, th I think as Trump's become president, there's been a dumbing down of America. Well, it, people it's don't just care that, about facts. It's anymore. these people, don't, they don't believe the facts and they make up their own stories and say, well, prove me wrong. You can't prove a conspiracy theorist, theorist wrong because they don't accept facts. So yeah, exactly. it's, it's impossible to argue with these people. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just an ongoing problem, and it just seems to be getting worse and worse as time goes on under this administration. Yeah, I, I'm hoping things kind of, I, I'm hoping people get a little bit smarter and, and realize that they can actually think for themselves. I mean, there's, there's people who actually make up their mind based on evidence that they see, and there's people that are influenced who make up their mind based on Fox News or social media. And those people, those are the people who the Russians actually targeted to try and influence the election. The people who don't don't research, don't find their own facts, but go by the word of people who are putting ideas in their heads. Yeah, exactly. And and that's what's got to stop. It's not it's not social media's fault. It's the people using social media who refuse to use their their head.
and refuse to find the facts rather than rely on others for the facts. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. And it's, just, it's just a problem we need to overcome. Uh, so, do we have any more questions? Or uh, I don't see any on Twitter. Uh, I don't know. Any more questions here in the, in the chat box before we close this out? Uh, somebody said, I've asked you guys to put up references with YouTube videos so we can research the facts. Uh, what exactly do you I'm mean? I'm not sure what facts you mean. I just, you use Google. Like, you don't, you don't need us to show you the facts. You can yeah. find the facts yourself. And Snopes is a great place to start. But if you don't believe Snopes, look at the links that Snopes, or the sources that Snopes provides you. Yeah, and it, see if they're reliable sources. Yeah, if you go to Snopes and search a fact that you want to look at or a case of something you want to research, they actually give their sources for every every point, basically, that they find. So you can read the original article. Is it the New York Times? Is it Fox News? Is it CNN? Is it a, a direct source? Is it Barack Obama? Is it Donald Trump? Is you, it the White House? Yeah, I mean, it, you can get this information. And, and sure, you can say, oh, the New York Times is fake and the Washington Post is fake. And but then you can read the article and you see who gave them that information. And you can... You know, you can track you can track it back. It's not hard to use your brain. Just just don't rely on other people to tell you what to think. Think for yourself, and I think that would that would save that would save America. <laughs> well, there's another. I I just saw somebody mention Hope Hicks, and that's another story that kind of came out today. That Hope Hicks actually told the uh, House Intel Committee that she tells white lies for Donald Trump because that of the way he the exaggerations he. He, he makes and the and the falsehoods that he exudes. She's actually said that she's told she told the public uh, white lies. So, so so my mind is like okay a white lie a white lie you might not be a white lie to everyone else. Well okay so so one of the highest up members of the Trump administration admitted that she tells white lies. Now the Trump administration is known for obsess obsessively telling lies. So if she's admitting she's telling white lies, what does that tell you? Yeah, well, and you know, how can you trust anything anyone says within the White House? If if a liar is admitting to lying, that means they're probably lying a, a magnitude greater. Oh yeah, <laughs> exponentially as much. People who admit that they lie are probably lying a lot more than they admit to. Um, I don't know. Is that all we have for today, or is there are there any other questions? Uh, I I I know uh, the conservative guy who wrote to me on Twitter, and we said we could have him on the show. Uh, if you're still watching, you asked how you can contact us. My email is actually listed on my Twitter account. You just yeah, send email I, there. I mean, I don't want to just have anybody on the yeah, show because we're going to be getting thousands of people contacting us to argue, debate us. Yeah, well, I'd rather get somebody that actually has a, a background in something that. That we yeah, can, like, like just let us know who you are, uh, Jim, and I, I'm not guaranteeing that we'll have you on the show, but feel free to email me, and I, will, I guarantee that I'll read the email, and we'll decide from there. Uh, and that, that goes for anyone. If anybody has any interest in asking me any questions or uh, proposing anything, you can always email me. My email is listed on my Twitter account, and my Twitter account can be accessed by going to at Ed Krasson. Yeah, and you can contact me if you're if I follow you on Twitter, then you can contact me. Otherwise, just reach out to Ed and I'll and he'll pass a message along to me. Uh, we're pretty open about. We I I try to read all the messages I receive. I might not reply to them all because I don't have the time, but I do read them all. I keep getting these group DMs where there's like twenty people in a group, and sometimes I don't read those. Yeah, I don't always read the big group ones, but if if you send me a DM on Twitter. Or an email and it's from you to me, not no one else involved. I, I guarantee I read it, whether I respond or not. I mean, I don't have time to respond to everyone. Yeah. So the closing message for today is: think for yourself. Don't rely on don't rely on other people to think for you. Don't believe everything you see online until you research it. And when you research and, and it, and don't believe everything you that you see online immediately after it happens like today's uh shooting at dalton high, high school we don't have all the facts on that yet we can only guess what made this guy shoot, shoot fire shots in the school we don't we don't know all the information yet so just just wait sit back and wait for all the information to come out yeah i mean social media when social media came about 
15 years ago or whatever, 18 years ago, uh, it was, most people thought it was great and it was going to bring people together and allow people from different countries to communicate and kind of, kind of see things the way other people see things. And instead it's tearing it apart because people are spreading lies and attacking people or taking things out of context. And well, th th that's the thing. It's like, I don't, I don't think the people who invented the internet, Al Gore, right? Al Gore's an inventor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the people who came up with the idea for the internet, the internet wasn't just an idea. It was something that kind of evolved over time. It started with just text being sent back and forth, email, and they kind of evolved with pictures. And, you know, it, it's evolved over time. I don't think those initial people who started sending emails back and forth thought the internet was going to become this huge thing where news stories would fake news stories. I, I, wait, wait. I don't want to use that word. News stories that have falsehoods in them will act, would actually influence a presidential election. I don't. I don't think they thought it would get that big. They people back then they didn't think there was a reason to have news stories that weren't accurate. The whole point of being a news agency or or a publication was to report on accurate news. But as things evolve, Joe Schmo can now start a news site. Uh, a terrorist can start a news site and write news stories and push yeah. them out on Facebook, buy advertising on Facebook, buy advertising on Twitter, push it out on Twitter, where millions of people see it, and just because they see it, they believe it, just because it looks like a professional news site. But with WordPress and other internet platforms now, anybody can make a professional-looking website. So yeah. you have to do your research. you got to research the writer of the article. Probably if the writer doesn't have a name, if it just says writer or journalist or... You know, and who are they sourcing? Now, if it's a mainstream media, if it's a mainstream media like CNN, Fox, uh, MSNBC, and they're saying they're saying unnamed sources, you can typically you can typically assume that they've backed this up by more than one source. And that's just Sean Hannity. I don't I don't really trust his uh, sources. Most, these of, people, most of the time, his sources are President Trump. These people have people to answer to as well. And and if it's an unnamed source, then there's usually more than one. Usually CNN's not going to report a story unless they have numerous sources on something. Yeah. They're not going to just, if one person comes in and says this, 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 they're going to confirm it with another individual who they know has not been in communications with the first individual. And that's how they, that's how they back up and source their information in a reliable way. Well, it, it's kind of like how Mueller doing his investigation. You know, okay, there's, there's one source that provides hearsay evidence saying that Trump did this, or Kushner did this, or Manafort did this. But what Mueller's job is to is to corroborate that that source's testimony, or that, that source's information, or hearsay, with other sources, or other hard evidence that kind of backs that up. Well, and one thing I notice is that Fox News typically, typically has single-source stories, whereas CNN and MSNBC, they usually, they usually rely on two, three, four, five sources. You've almost never see a CNN or MSNBC story that's saying a single source said this. Yeah. But Fox News, you actually do. And that, that's, that, that's not a difference between the channels, but the difference between a story. If you see single source, don't, don't rely on it heavily. If you see multiple sources, especially with, pretty much especially with a single anonymous source. If it's a single source and that source is named and it's respected individual, yeah. then you can usually count on the news being accurate. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I guess that's where we can end today. Uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll probably try to do another one of these sometime later this week. Um, we're also trying to do like just jump in ones where we might just do a 10 minute, 10 minute break where we talk about breaking stories. Uh, so uh, just so, follow us on yeah, Periscope. Yeah, follow us on Periscope. You can do that and then you'll be notified when we go live. Uh, and then you can also follow us on Twitter here and here. Yep. Thanks. See you guys later.